are in a new month, but the severe weather threat for the plains, unfortunately, looks to continue. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. In this video, we are going to talk about that continuing severe weather threat through the first week of May in that traditional tornado alley period that unfortunately just saw days of deadly severe weather. We're going to talk about the area, highlight the timeline with a high resolution future radar, and then towards the end of this video, stick around for this. We're going to look long range. There are indications that we may get a short break through the middle part of May, but then it could come roaring back the severe weather threat by the end of the month. We'll talk about why that is in just one second. Before we get into this video, if you do want to stay updated as we move through severe weather season and get into hurricane season which is officially one month away getting started on june 1st hit that subscribe button for me post in the comments where you're tuning in from and what the weather is doing and we are going to get right into this so here we go this is the short-term severe weather threat you see it there an enhanced risk again is designated by the storm prediction center out of norman oklahoma for today may 1st and you see a level three out of five that enhanced risk area from about just the eastern panhandle of oklahoma into west central texas there that's going to include san angelo abilene to the east of lubbock this includes childress parts of the western areas of the red river right along the uh oklahoma texas border as well that level two out of five risk so again it's still on the elevated side but not as high as that orange area that's going to include parts of houston san antonio into dallas norman oklahoma oklahoma city into topeka kansas into parts of southern nebraska as as well damaging wind is going to be the main threat big time hail also involved in this so the tornado threat is certainly not as high as what we saw with the several day outbreak of the end of april but nonetheless that tornado threat isn't zero especially in that enhanced risk area and again that's still going to be an elevated shot for that to happen especially early on so here we go six o'clock central time we see these kind of congealing supercells in between stanton and lubbock so that's what we're going to watch for the short term anyway as these storms get going these more isolated cells these are going to have the potential to produce some big time hailstones and then the potential for some tornadic activity we're starting to get things more into a line uh, into central texas into graham into brady toward oklahoma city as well those will be rolling through eastern kansas more of a line of thunderstorms so this is going to be your higher end damaging wind threat late tonight into the early stages of Thursday, May 2nd, into places like Austin, Waco, Texas, south of Dallas and Fort Worth, and then sliding into Louisiana. Then we get another round going for tomorrow. This is going to be Thursday, May 2nd, 8 o'clock in the evening. Same places again, more of a damaging wind threat again toward Brady, Graham, Oklahoma City, Norman, uh, and then into eastern Oklahoma, parts of southern Missouri into northwest Arkansas. So that is the short-term severe weather threat. This is going to be induced by at least through the first week of May because of this continued dip in the jet stream into the west. And anytime you have an upper level dip in the jet stream, that helps to, again, it brings some cooler air down and mix it with that surging in humidity coming in from the Gulf of Mexico. When you get that colder air on top of the warmer air at the surface, that generates the instability. And then with that trough here, you also get that turning of the wind with height. So again, this is the pattern that's going to likely hold through the first week-ish of May. And I want to show you uh, a couple of things now. I think this will help to illustrate the threat area going forward. Of course, it's still too early for specifics on the day-by-day -day severe weather threat as we move through the first week of May. But just know that that threat is going to continue in Tornado Alley. I want to show you here the kind of a, a three-window view of uh, Colorado State University, the SIPs, analogs, and then the Storm Prediction Center highlight here from day three on. And as we get into May 3rd, notice where we have the threat area. This is going to be from the SIPS experimental analog system using past weather to predict the future or past setups, I should say. And you see it right there highlighted into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, into Arkansas. Same deal with the Colorado State analog, almost spot on there. Storm Prediction Center giving that a low end shot. It's a little bit further north. We'll see if that updates going forward. Now, getting into May 4th, this is again that extended outlook here as we move over the next few days uh, back into Texas, parts of New Mexico even. Analogs are also on this. The CSU probability is also there. Predictability too low from the Storm Prediction Center, so they have not given a highlight. Now, as we move into May 5th, a couple of areas pop up on the SIPS analog page. Uh, 
what I'm showing you here. And what, we're really looking at that higher probability, that darker orange. So again, Texas, Oklahoma, into parts of Wyoming, Colorado, Nebraska. So your traditional tornado alley again. The probability is a little bit lower in the CSU analog predictability too low. It looks like, though, we're starting to hone in on a day 6, day 7. That's going to be May 6th and May 7th. So you see here, I'm going to show this one by one, that we do have the SIPS analog again showing those higher probabilities, those darker oranges showing up, and then even higher probabilities from the Colorado State uh, system here forecasting that, uh, that uh, severe weather threat. And then the Storm Prediction Center also coming out with a day six. Again, anytime the Storm Prediction Center starts to highlight anything beyond day four, the confidence is certainly a little bit higher so that they give their own forecast. Now, as we move into day seven, this is May 7th, you see that severe weather threat kind of sliding east closer into the Tennessee River Valley, the Ohio River Valley as well. We have that highlighted. Bigger red bullseye there indicating that we have the opportunity uh, a higher end opportunity for something as we move into uh, May 7th. You see that there in red toward parts of Arkansas, eastern Oklahoma into Missouri, even that darker black line indicating the potential for a significant storm prediction center has not highlighted anything. But then as we get into May 8th, you see that probability continuing to stay there. So the analogs suggested some of the longer range forecast guidance suggested as well. And I just show you the weather pattern that would lead you to believe anyway that the potential is going to be there through the first week of May for a severe weather to continue in that traditional tornado alley and then sliding east into parts of the mid-Atlantic as we get into the 6th, 7th, and 8th time frame as well. So we're going to be watching that. All right, I want to show you something else. Let me get to my different window here. Uh, we're going to be looking at the Madden-Julian oscillation forecast, the MJO. We use this a lot, to, especially in tropical forecasting. We'll certainly be using it a lot on this channel to kind of look long range to give you a heads up if we're going to have a lull in the action or if we're expecting a flurry of activity. It's a Basically, we can get into this uh, a lot more and in a different video in a separate video, but it's basically a convective complex that circumnavigates the globe every 30 to 60 days. And similar to El Nino and La Nina, when it's in a different section of the world, it does indicate, it does bring about different weather in different parts of the world. So again, we're going to be looking at this a lot. And there's a bunch of different numbers, and there's a lot of lines on here. I know it looks kind of crazy, but basically I want to focus your attention on these light yellow lines and these are some of the european ensemble members that take this number into zone three zone four zone five and zone six what does that mean i know it's a lot but i'm going to show you what it means here quite simply i'm going to bring up the the teleconnection page here on the precipitation so as we see, as we watch that over the next couple of days, watch the Madden-Julian oscillation, move into phase three, phase four, and phase five. I want to focus your attention down here where you see my mouse going crazy. There's three and four. Notice the brown starting to pop up. Same for five. So that would promote drier than normal conditions in the Tornado Alley area. Texas, Oklahoma, Nebraska, southern Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Colorado, eastern Wyoming. Over the next middle part of May. So really beyond the 7th and 8th where I showed you that active stretch rolling. Now, I mentioned that as we get towards the end of May, really that 3rd to 4th week of May, we get that Madden-Julian oscillation back to phase 6. And you see the green pop up. The higher the normal probabilities for, uh, higher the normal areas for wetter than normal probabilities showing up. So, it appears that as we switch that phase and as that convective complex moves across the equatorial areas of earth that's where that's the zone that it likes again for that phase six to promote wetter than normal conditions and as we get into may we knowing knowing this being severe weather season that would promote promote that active weather returning as we get into that third or fourth week of may Alrighty, guys i hope you found this helpful if you did please hit that thumbs up button if you love the weather and love having the weather conversation post in the comments where you're tuning in from if you have any questions do that as well and also hit that subscribe button we'd love to have you on board and join the team we'll catch you next time